You are watching Beyond 100 Days with Nifemi Oguntoye, and our attention this evening is turned to the education sector. You can join the conversation right now on X using the hashtag Beyond 100 Days. Remember to tag at TVC News NG. The ministers of education have met with the leadership of the striking members of the non-academic staff universities in a bid to end the warning strikes. The ministers who spoke with journalists after the meeting in Abuja noted that the federal government would continue to dialogue with the unions to ensure that things do not escalate. The union did commend the openings of government, but insists that the industrial action continues until a favorable response is gotten from the federal government. The unions began a seven-day nationwide warning strike on Monday to protest the refusal of government to release their four-month salaries without since 2021. The meeting was attended by the leadership of Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, Non-Academic Staff Union of Universities, as well as the National Association of Academic Technologists. The issues and uh, they are going back to the outcome of this issue of our uh, Understanding here, while on our part we will uh, continue to discuss the issues to conclusion. We have been said that since this is a warning strike, this effort should continue, and uh, hopefully, before the end of the warning strike something reasonable and tangible will come from the government. We appreciated their openness, but this struggle will continue as soon as we receive a positive response from the higher authorities. And the Nigerian Education Loan Fund says it has not indefinitely postponed the implementation of the student loan scheme. In a statement by the agency, it says, quote, while there has been a postponement, we wish to state that it's not indefinite, end quote. Uh, Nelfond reiterated that the postponement was necessitated because of the need to have all stakeholders fully aligned before the former flag of by President Tinubu. The executive secretary of the agency, Nasir um, Aitogo, said everything is ready for the takeoff of the scheme. According to him, the loan application portal is ready and that Mr. President has, has, uh, has approved funds to uh, for the smooth takeoff. We also know that both the House of Reps and the Senate have um, passed the, the repeal and reenactment bill of the student loan, and we're looking forward to seeing an assent from Mr. President in a moment from now. Um, let's talk about, let's look at the issues over um, concerning this program, the non-teaching staff warning strike. There's also the issue of the suspension of accreditation of certificates from some countries by the Federal Minister of Education, as well as security in our schools. Um, I'm joined um, uh, from our Buddha studio by the Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Sununu. Dr. Sununu, thank you so much for joining us on the program this evening. We have just about um, 20 minutes um, to ask you a few questions. We hope to keep the conversation fast paced so we can cover them all. Let's begin with the Sanu and Nasu strike, uh, which many have said was avoidable. President Tinubu already gave a waiver last year for the payment of four out of eight months without salary in 2022. Uh, the question really is, why were these other unions excluded, or rather exempted from, from this payment? Well, uh, thank you very much for having me in the studio once more today to shed light on certain government policies and uh, actions that pertains to education. Well, the strike actually uh, happens, and they are on the only strike. And uh, as you rightly mentioned in the in your earlier briefing that we have had a meeting with both the three associations, senior staff uh, association of Nigeria and then none of the University of Nigeria and then non-academic staff union and uh, National Association of uh, Academic Technologies. We all had a meeting with them just uh, yesterday to review, to review the situations and uh, uh, having the understanding so that they can call up the strike. Well, you know, uh, actually, 
the as prior the President Bola Ahmed Tinubu gave a waiver of uh, four months out of eight months of his held uh, salary following the invocation of no work, no pay in the immediate past uh, uh, administrations, which uh, resulted from the strike that uh, ASU uh, embarked. While the ASU also is on strike, many associations also joined the ASU, uh, and the university system became uh, locked down for almost eight months. And uh, to have a give and take, Mr. President graciously approved the payment of uh, four months arrears of the eight months of withheld salaries that uh, occur due to uh, invocation of no work, no pay. And uh, that has been started and the ASU owner has been paid uh, to them. And uh, for the main three associations that also embarked on the strike, we are currently processing the, uh, the payment for, that is due for them. But unfortunately, before we can... Uh, reached the conclusion of that, which is now receiving the Mr. President's attention. The, the strike happened, and uh, we called them to explain the situation that we are currently uh, working on it, and we have a very fruitful understanding that while we are continuing to work towards uh, getting them paid, they also uh, uh, consult with the uh, various associations' uh, membership so that they can also show the understanding and they have really realized that we are not working, uh, we are not uh, solely sleeping. They have realized that we have uh, taken the issue, uh, escalated to the highest level, and uh, they are convinced also that we are doing something. But unfortunately, uh, as strike is concerned, uh, they need to consult with their membership uh, so as uh, to get their own view on the necessity of uh, continuing with strike or otherwise, and uh, hopefully, we are working uh, tirelessly to ensure that the strike, uh, front warning strike, will not uh, gravitate to full-blown strike. That's where hey, we are right now. Honorable Minister, actually what they said is that um, they are actually going to see through the seven-day warning strike and hopefully they can, you know, get some positive response from government. There are talks about the fact that's that government... That's what government I said. Yes, exactly. I'm just reiterating what you said, but there are also conversations about yes. the fact that to honor agreements that he has with labor unions if we're going to, you know, break this cycle of um, industrial action. But let's talk about um, the student loan. We understand that the new yes. act will now address some challenges that include the management structure, applicant um, eligibility requirements, funding sources, repayment procedures, and what have you. But I want you to speak to the timeline because this is almost 10 months into this administration and people are wondering why is it taking so long? Um, we have, we've had to change the launch time like twice since the last time I spoke with the Honorable Minister of Education on this show last year, um, September. When will the student loan kick off and who will be able to benefit from it? We, we have to understand the perspective of Mr. President. Mr. President is a Democrat. Mr. President is a firm believer of rule of law. Mr. President also has a strong and corruption stand as far as issues are concerned. And uh, as a Democrat, you have to listen to the yearning and aspiration of your people so that you can carry them along and you will have their buy-in in whatever policy implementation you are going to have in the country. Now, when Mr. President came, the first line for him to assure that the commitment he gave to Nigerians and especially the student is for him to uh, sign the law, uh, the act, of uh, the Bill of the National Assembly to convert it to an act so that we can have a working uh, rules and regulation that we are going to drive policy from. And Mr. President did that. But following the implementations, uh, the ascent and then the commencement of the move towards implementation, the operationalization of the act becomes so difficult because there are so many bottlenecks, which Mr. President, because he's a firm believer of rule of law, he wouldn't want to circumvent uh, those provisions and go and do without uh, guidelines. And then because also we are changing a very good alignment between the executive and national assembly as a whole, Mr. President quickly uh, drafted a an amendment and repeal act we are bill which was sent to the National Assembly and in the shortest possible time the National Assembly uh, conducted an impressive and widespread all inclusive
public hearing that uh, garner all the, uh, uh, the issues raised by general public and also made known to them by the stakeholders and synthesize those uh, presentations and come up with a very strong uh, bill that is currently waiting the assent of Mr. President. And uh, luckily for us, it is not going to take longer time because uh, already the structural framework in terms of the online uh, processing of the loan has already been established and concluded, which you, you have also alluded to that in your uh, the summary of the findings as uh, relate to you, uh, which you, you, you have alluded, alluded to that. So it means that what we are now is now going to be, we are not starting from scratch. We are going to build up on what we have. And then we also have uh, all the appointment uh, as enshrined in the act. I want to assure that Mr. President will soon announce those uh, as soon as possible. And the, uh, the, the access to the fund will become uh, reality to the student. And uh, I don't think that uh, it's going to take a very long time. All right. I was, the, rest, um, the, delay, the, the delay is just to make... Uh, to remove the bottlenecks, and you quite agree that if an act says that you must have a grant to, Mr. President cannot say, I'm not using that grant to. You have to provide a grant to. But putting all into consideration, the initial act happens to be so restrictive and restricting the limitation and utilization of the act. And therefore, the, what the Mr. President did is the right thing to go in his right direction, to come and remove the bottleneck so that we can make it more user-friendly, more accessible, and their uh, impact. A major issue in Nigeria right now is the issue of skill. We have many graduates roaming the streets, but they don't have uh, skills to enable them to have uh, to be self-employed, that they can produce to be employer of labor. And Mr. President found that really that is an omission. If we can have a whole loan that will not pay emphasis to skill, then it's a seriously defective and defect. It's also clearly, corrected in the current Minister, that are, the bill yes. has been awaiting the present signature. You know, I, I know you're a doctor, so um, you know you you have a wealth of information in this regard. But we also have a lot to talk about in such a short time. I was hoping that you were going to be specific as to when the student loan will start, but I'll just take um, in a short while as answer to that question. Let's quickly touch on the 12-member investigative panel that was set up in January. The act on and bring it operational. To, to, yeah. to, but to I, I want to say that it's going to be immediately. Immediately. Okay, great. Immediately. Yes. As soon as the Let's president has signed it, it's going to be immediately because all the framework is there. All right. I hear you clearly. The funding has already the... been provided. The online uh, portal has also been provided. And uh, what is next? There's nothing. All we need is the president to amend, uh, to assent to the act and thereby certifying that all the amendments that were done before are captured. And uh, accessibility is better to the, the, the loan to enjoy the benefit of virtually all the students than restricting it to very few. All right. So we expect implementation immediately. Let's turn our attention to the yeah. investigative panel that was set up in January to probe universities uh, selling uh, fake educational credentials to Nigerians after the alleged certificate racketeering um, in Benin Republic came to the limelight earlier this year. It's now past two months, which was given as the you know, time frame for that investigation to be carried out. What are the findings, Honorable Minister? Well, the preliminary report that we have uh, so far received, because uh, we, the, it's about two months now, but you know, they have to, it's not an, a local issue. It's an international uh, issue. And therefore, they need to go out of the country and go to the two countries. And they have been into Benin and uh, Togo, uh, Togo Republic, and their findings really uh, uh, justify the cost of what we are doing. Because uh, it shows, goes to show that uh, the claim or the report has been uh, mentioned by the under, under, uh, undercover journalists is a reality. And we are working out to ensure that what actions are we taking. So, since that is a reality, and uh, we expanded their, their terms of reference to have us a holistic approach so that we can address it one and for all. Uh, and, for all. and uh, even in Nigeria, we have also tried to uh, ensure that we put other measures. Like now, a lot of people are complaining that uh, uh, JAM have refused to upload their, 
their direct entry result into their portal for uh, this. And uh, we realize that uh, there must also be another screening point so that whoever is going for direct entry in university must have his uh, uh, certificate certified to avoid uh, short chain in Nigeria. We are talking about food security, we are talking about health security. We must also talk about education security, which is the most important security because if we are giving people position that they are not in any way qualified to sit on that seat, and representing the country, we are destroying the nation. There is well, a saying the, that if we want to destroy the issue, any nation, you don't use the to weapon. You can break their pains. Yeah. Once you it's break their pain, you are you are destroying them. And therefore, the we have to ensure that the security of education yeah. is preserved. The report of certificate racketeering, you know, in January led to the suspension of evaluation and accreditation of degree certificate from. Uh, three countries, Niger, Togo, and Benin Republic, by the federal government, uh, which is supposed to last till the no, outcome. Togo and Benin Republic. Yes, but there are yes, now there are now, listening, yes. there are now thousands of Nigerian students, honourable minister, stranded in these countries as a result of this decision, and we're hearing that Benin Republic, for instance, has actually concluded its own investigation and has communicated its finding to Nigeria. Is that something you can confirm? You see, you see, let me say that we have not suspended study. What we have suspended is verification to say that this result is authentic. And therefore, you can be mobilized for national service. You can also be employed as far as that certificate is concerned. That's, that's what we have suspended. And the suspension is to find the veracity of the claim that has been forwarded to us. Yes, if they, have, uh, they might have completed and forwarded to Foreign Affairs Ministry, and we are yet to receive that communication from the Foreign Affairs Ministry. And even if they have completed and even forwarded to us, we must also wait for the result of the uh, investigation committee that we have also uh, inaugurated and give them the assignment. That is not just enough for us. We have, they have gone there and seen is bleeding, and they are going to report back us to the ministry, and then we now take our decision. Certain resolution may even be above the decision of the Federal Ministry of Education may have to go to uh, ratification by the Federal Executive Council based on its weights. So we are waiting and I wouldn't want to preempt the result of the investigation that is so far being conducted. That will be prematurely and uh, it's not in the interest of the country to uh, this. What we are saying is, look at even that, the role of the ministry minister. itself. If you can hear me, the, the challenge that many people have with this is the time frame, right? So there's a leaked circular, for instance, dated 12th February, and that was received first March by the Office of the Honorable Minister of Education. They are saying these issues have happened in countries like Cyprus and Turkey and what of you, and we didn't have to place this kind of ban. Um, is, is that, do we have that sense of urgency, considering the impact it's having on legitimate students who are studying in, this, in these countries? You see, uh, you see, misunderstood me. We haven't said that legitimate students should not continue with their studies. We have allowed them and they will continue with their study. But what we say, those who have obtained the results and want need to be authenticated, is that is what we have suspended at level of the ministry. And we didn't say indefinite. We said pending the outcome of the investigation. So the legitimate student will continue to pursue their academic career and they have nothing to fear. But we wait for the result. The only fear is for those who are right now being engaged in one way or the other with fake results from emanating from those uh, countries. And uh, we wait for the recommendation of the committee that we have integrated. And we are going to strictly work based on their recommendation. If it were under, we have to go to the Federal Executive Council. We'll make presentation to the council for right. uh, ratification. All right. approval. Let's take a short break, Honorable Minister, and we'll be back with more. Stay with us, everyone. <music> Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Sununu, is my guest on the show this evening. Thank you so much for staying the course on the program. I'd like us to touch on the issue of insecurity in some of our schools. But when you said you will be waiting for the report of this committee, how long more um, will the ministry wait, considering that um, the two months initially given has elapsed? 
The highest thing is because of the international travel, and we expect within the period we have extended to them, it should get reported in the next 10 days. Next 10 days. Thank you so much, Dr. Sununu. Yes. Uh, quickly, let's talk about the abduction of school children. Um, um, we've seen like 287 abducted in um, some 14 days ago, and uh, Mr. President was clear to say that there is, an, there is now an, an end to the payment of ransom and that all hands are on deck to ensure that we, you know, secure the release of these students. How far have we gone with that? Well, the, the, you, you must know that, that uh, since then there is a lot of concerted effort going between the federal government and uh, collaborating with the Kaduna state government and other states that were also have their uh, school children abducted. Uh, it's a sad uh, development in the arena of education in Nigeria because what we are working is to see how we can move uh, children from the street back to school. And now you have a, a situation whereby children were abducted from the uh, school premises. It becomes so sad and uh, unbearable to virtually able parent and uh, those of uh, us who are saddled with responsibility of uh, uh, custody of those students. And you can see how promptly Mr. Student act, uh, Mr. President acted by directing the Vice President to be in a Kaduna and also giving the directives to uh, all the security agencies to ensure that the, uh, the students are freed from their captors. So this has gone to show how much. And this, since then, we have not also stayed, uh, uh, learned on our oath. We have been working. I was in the Nigerian uh, Security School Defense Corps, uh, and uh, even today, there was a training on the, which was uh, declared open by the Chief of Defense Staff at the, uh, involving the Ministry personnel to bring to fore the needs for them to have the new training as well as a, a rapid response uh, situation is concerned in our school, all in an effort to make our school safe. Uh, by and large, uh, the effort that is ongoing to get the uh, student out of the uh, kidnappers, then it's not something that one can publicly discuss. But I want to tell you that uh, so much has been done, and uh, uh, hopefully, in the shortest possible time, our effort will see the light of the day. And those oh, children Minister, will be united run, to their parents. We have completely and, run out of time, but you know, we've been battling the issue of um, insurgency for over, for almost two decades now. And you know, we're back asking the question um, how did Almost 300 students, you know, were carried away in broad daylight. What's been done, you know, at the back of our Safe School Initiative? What's been done to ensure that this doesn't happen again? In a minute, if you can. As what is being done now is to, this is what I initially told you, is to become, make of us more or less uh, security conscious, security responsive, and that's why I've been separately to national uh, reference, uh, uh, safe school rapid response center that is uh, here in Abuja, and we have also called on the state governors to open up their state rapid response centers so that can be, can, uh, they can be connected to, and we are working hard to ensure deployment of technology in terms of our school surveillance, tracking, and also monitoring uh, activities. We are also looking at the possibility of also improving, uh, working hard to improve our infrastructure in terms of getting our school uh, fence uh, generally, and uh, this we have also discussed today. I was uh, in a meeting today with National uh, Coordinator on Safe School Financing, looking at how we are going to source money to collaborate between state and federal government to ensure that security measures are placed in, in our school, most especially fencing. And we have also called on the seriousness toward the uh, deployment of uh, security consciousness. Most states have also uh, launched their vigilante group, and we are working in earnest to ensure that the security training that has just been started and the civil defense corps that have already trained their personnel, which cascade right. that to even the local vigilante, so that it can also be utilized in, uh, in terms of providing local security within the, within the school. So also the, we, we are also, so, uh, the ministry has trained so many teachers. On the, uh, to increase their awareness. Nigerians are really counting on seeing all those plans come to fruition. Minister of State for Education, Dr. Yusuf Sununu, that's our time. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you. That's our show today. You can watch it again at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifebi. Welcome to it.